again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 13, Part 5, Comprehensive Review. In this last episode for Chapter 13, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to review terms with you from the entire chapter. I'm not going to go over all the terms you'll need to know for the test. I'm just going to randomly select a few from those that I know tend to give trouble. Okay, well here we go. In this first part, I'm going to quiz you over some general concepts and anatomy. Number one, what is the purpose of the endocrine system? To secrete hormones that help the body maintain homeostasis. What is a hormone? That's a chemical messenger that regulates the activities of organs, glands, and tissues. What is the term for any disorder of excessive hormone secretion? That's hypercrinism. What is the term for any disorder of the endocrine system? That's endocrinopathy. Which gland secretes cortisol? That's the adrenal gland, or more specifically, the adrenal cortex. Which gland secretes insulin? That's the pancreatic islet. Which gland secretes the growth hormone? That's the pituitary gland. Which gland secretes calcitonin? That's the thyroid gland. Which gland secretes the parathyroid hormone? Well, that one is easy. It's the parathyroid gland. Which gland secretes glucagon? That's also the pancreatic islet. Which gland secretes thyroxine? That's the thyroid gland. Which gland secretes the adrenocorticotropic hormone? That's the pituitary gland. And which gland secretes epinephrine? That again is the adrenal gland. Which gland secretes the follicle stimulating hormone? Once again, that's the pituitary. And finally, which gland secretes progesterone? That's the ovary. Okay, that is a sampling of general concepts and anatomy. Again, if you had any trouble with that, you need to go back over it again and again so you can get it 100% of the time without any trouble. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do some hormones. I'm going to quiz you over the hormones. Which hormone regulates calcium in the blood by moving it into storage in the bones and teeth?
That's calcitonin. Which hormone instructs the adrenal glands to secrete cortisol? That's the adrenocorticotropic hormone. And which hormone stimulates the release of ova and the secretion of testosterone? Again, that's the release of ova in the female, the secretion of testosterone in the male. That is the interstitial cell stimulating hormone. Which hormone stimulates the liver to convert glycogen into blood glucose? That's glucagon, G-L-U-C-A-G-O-N. Which hormone regulates electrolyte levels? That's aldosterone. Which hormone tells the kidneys to retain water and decrease urine production? That's the antidiuretic hormone. Which hormone prepares the uterus for pregnancy and is necessary for maintaining pregnancy? That's progesterone. Which hormone regulates metabolism? A couple options there. Probably the one that should come to mind first is thyroxine, T H Y R O X I N E. One could also have said tri iodothyronine. Which hormone acts as an anti-inflammatory and is also known as a stress hormone? That's cortisol, C-O-R-T-I-S-O-L. And which hormone regulates calcium in the blood by moving it out of storage in the bones and teeth? That's the parathyroid hormone. Okay, again, a sampling of hormones. You're going to need to know part one, the anatomy, what the particular glands do. Part two, you're going to need to know what the hormones they secrete do. Now for part three, we're going to review the name pathologies. These tend to be especially tricky, so I'm going to quiz you over the pathologies that have someone's name in them. What is the term for the autoimmune disorder that causes hyperthyroidism? Hyperthyroidism would be too much thyroid, excessive secretion, and this is Graves disease. Capital G, R A V E, apostrophe S, disease. What is the term for the autoimmune disorder that causes hypocortisolism? Well, hypocortisolism is going to be too little cortisol. The adrenal glands are not producing enough cortisol. And this would be Addison's disease. Capital A, D D I S O N, apostrophe S, disease. And what is the term for the condition caused by excessive cortisol secretion? That's Cushing syndrome, capital C, U S H I N G, apostrophe S syndrome.
What is the term for the autoimmune disorder that destroys cells of the thyroid gland? That's Hashimoto's thyroiditis, capital H, A-S-H-I-M-O-T-O, -O, apostrophe S, thyroiditis. And finally, what is the term for the condition caused by aldosteronism? Well, aldosteronism is too much aldosterone. This is Kahn's syndrome, capital C O N N apostrophe S syndrome. All right, now we're going to go ahead and do some general pathologies. What is the term for any disorder of pituitary function? That's pituitarism. P-I-T-U-I-T-A-R-I-S-M. What is the term for high blood sugar? That's hyperglycemia. What is the term for excess secretion from the thyroid gland? Well, excess secretion or overactive thyroid is going to be hyperthyroidism. And what is the term for an enlarged thyroid gland? A couple of options there. The textbook gives us the older fashioned term goiter, G O I T E R. One could also say, Thyromegaly, P H Y R O M E G A L Y. The term for a disorder of insulin resistance is known as what? That's type 2 diabetes mellitus. What is the term for excessive urination? That's polyuria. What is the term for a benign tumor that can affect pituitary secretion? That's a pituitary adenoma. A disorder caused by inadequate secretion of the antidiuretic hormone is known as what? That's diabetes insipidus. And what is the term for congenital hypothyroidism? That's cretinism. And finally, what is the term for the life-threatening condition of hyperglycemia? Well, hyperglycemia is high or excessive blood sugar. This is diabetes, right? It's a life-threatening condition of diabetes. That would be the diabetic coma. Okay, and that reviews the major areas you need to be concerned with. Again, you need to know each gland. You need to know what the gland secretes. You also need to know what those secretions or hormones do. And then you're going to need to know the various pathologies that occur when there is either too much or too little secretion. 
And I didn't review the procedures because there really aren't a lot of procedures. You do need to go back and review those. There are a few and they will be on the test, but they tend not to be the major area of concern. Well, good luck to you on your test and congratulations for getting past chapter 13. This is the last really hard one. After this, you're going to find that 14 and 15, our last two chapters, are much easier to deal with. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology 